Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be asking or answering the question, can lasers or energy devices melt facial fat? So we're not talking about devices that are specifically done uh, to reduce facial fat. For example, um, uh, certain diode lasers um, or uh, certain lasers associated with liposuction or tightening devices meant to do that. So basically what I'm trying to get at is that we're talking about lasers, for example, fractional lasers, uh, micro-needling devices, energy-focused micro-needling devices, things like um, HIFU as well, high-intensity focused ultrasound, and monopolar and bipolar radio frequency devices such as the Marge. Now the big question is that if you're using lasers in the context of which they're use, used for, for example, uh, skin rejuvenation, can that have an adverse outcome in this situation, melt or decrease in, in uh, our term, we call it fat atrophy, yeah? So basically, can it cause fat atrophy? That is the big question. Now, if you do a Google search, chances are you're gonna see many patients re report that their fractional laser, their IPL, their BBL, their Fraxel, or what have you, cause facial fat loss. So the aim of this talk is not to actually deny those cases. I'm not denying those cases, but what I'm trying to do is pre present you a way of which we can analyze and think how these modalities are actually used, both in that incident, but also used safely. Okay, so, um, and we're gonna use anatomy, so we're gonna use regional anatomy and we're gonna use physics in the sense of wavelengths together with power and how much um, penetration into the dermis or fat layer do these devices have. So let's kick it off, yeah? So when we talk about lasers, there are different types of lasers. There's fractional lasers and fully ablative lasers. The most amount of uh, reported adverse effects are basically from fractional lasers. Uh, so the fractional lasers can be classed as ablative, so things like carbon dioxide and, uh, or erbium, or can be classed as non-ablative. Classic example, Fraxel Dual 1927 and Fraxel 1550. And there's a lot of other non-ablative wavelengths in the 1400 type uh, nanometer spectrum. Now, um, in that context, chances are, if you use a CO2, most CO2 lasers will actually have uh, very sensible parameters. There are one or two in the market, so uh, dermatologists and plastic surgeons would know that Luminous makes a super duper, super powerful uh, laser called the Ultrapulse. And do I use it? The answer is yes, yeah? But I don't usually use the Ultrapulse, especially in the SCAR FX, because it just goes too deep uh, for facial rejuvenation. I might use something like the CPG scanner for that, yeah? So once again, when we talk about lasers, it's basically, a laser should be viewed as an instrument and an instrument only, yeah? So basically it's this, if you get the scalpel, can the scalpel actually harm the patient? Yes, it can, um, but if it's used incorrectly or used um, without precision. And it goes the same for even physical modalities, so something like dermal filler. Can a dermal filler cause an untoward side effect such as arterial occlusion, blindness? Yes, it can, but if it's used in a uh, appropriate way, um, I wouldn't say it can't, but actually the chances are much, 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 much lower. And same with energy devices. Now, the whole question is this. When we use energy devices in the context of skin rejuvenation, I kind of make it kind of easy, yeah? Because uh, lasers help with the texture. Tone is what it is, as in tightness. And volume, as the name suggests, uh, implies you're just going to add more volume in order to make skin more youthful. Now, uh, if you're trying to use lasers to actually add volume, which I know some, some dermatologists who can't feel do, um, but that's not right, yeah, because uh, volume replacement is volume replacement. It's a standalone. It's not, I guess, dependent on your texture. It's not dependent on your tone. Like, it can be argued, but let's keep this simple, yeah? Volume replacement is there for dermal fillers, for fat transfer, and that's it. Lasers and energy devices should be used for textural change. So we're talking about things like brown spots, fine wrinkles, uh, sun damage, uh, red veins, uh, capillaries, uh, things like that. Lasers are very, very good for that. A laser should not be turned up to go at maximum level in order to try to stimulate collagen right down deep in the dermis to give a more uh, volume, I guess, in your skin, because that's a wrong way of actually approaching things. So. What I'm trying to get at is that you've got to use the right modality, you know, the right method, the right instrument for the job. In certain cases, it may not be lasers, it just might be as simple as dermal filling. 
In other cases where there's skin laxity and very little textural change, for example in ethnic skin rejuvenation where there's very little in the way of pigmentation, your device may be something like radio frequency, yeah? something like monopolar radio frequency or bipolar radio frequency, or it may be something like HIFU, high intensity focus ultrasound, which is ultra therapy or um, ultra transformer or ultraformers. Yeah? So all of these, uh, I guess, devices have their role. So am I still trying to skirt the answer in regards to, or, or skirt the question in regards to can they give you fat loss? The answer is in theory, yes. So after doing a whole literature review in the last uh, week or so, I've come up with two articles in the context of uh, reported, yeah, so uh, objective reported uh, fat atrophy. And both of these articles uh, were focused on radio frequency. In this situation, it was Dimage. And the findings concluded that um, the way it was utilized was basically bulk hitting that's way uh, in excess of what the company recommends. In those two situations, I looked at the photos, in those two situations, the amount of fat loss was basically focal, so it's not global. Um, however, working with other devices, for example, like I said, the CO2 lasers and things like uh, intensive or, or basically the radio frequency devices, which can go very deep. Well, I mean very deep, I'm talking about more than three mil. In some cases, there's some companies that want to do a five mil radio frequency microneedling device. Will that cause fat atrophy? The answer is that more than likely. No one's gonna test, nor can they actually use that ethically. And for example, put a five mil ne needle in someone's temple or uh, medial cheek and see what happens. But as dermatologists and plastic surgeons know that these devices, um, uh, especially radio frequency microneedling, yeah, uh, when it comes to insulated devices, uh, when we actually look at the endpoint and feel the heat as we're delivering these pulses, uh, we can act, we know that it's super powerful. So uh, the answer to your question is that yes, if they if they're put up all the way up to the uh, maximum power. Uh, plus maximum PD or pulse duration, together with what's known as pulse stacking. Pulse stacking is basically firing that device two, three, four, five, six times in that area. I have seen uh, fat atrophy from uh, other doctors and, and I guess uh, other clinics, uh, and the case is real. However, in the vast majority of cases, if you approach things with regional anatomy and um, I guess understanding of the physics for the, for the device, chances are it's gonna be very, very safe. So remember with all these devices, it's only as good as your practitioner. It's exactly like a pair of scissors, yeah? Um, speaking of which, I did need a haircut, but if you do um, go see a really good hairstylist with a pair of scissors, you get a bloody awesome haircut. Uh, but if you see a clown that asks your brother to cut your hair, which I have done many occasions, um, your haircut may not be as good. The instrument's still the same, uh, but the outcome's different. And uh, the X factor basically is the person who's performing the job. So remember, lasers and all the energy devices is just a tool. It's not like uh, yeah, you walk in and you have everyone has a laser, uh, nor everyone has HIFU or radio frequency. I hope that helps you understand uh, the concept of, uh, I guess, fat loss. Now, for all of you who are, I guess, afraid of um, fat loss, the whole idea is to, like I said, tr and trust your specialist because when they look at your, uh, your, I guess, wants, your needs, uh, your problems, they will come up with a solution that's based upon you, uh, both as regional anatomy, like I said, in, in certain areas we have to respect, but also in regards to texture, tone, volume. So once again, guys, it's actually using the appropriate uh, methods to treat your problems. Guys, I hope you liked the video. It's a very short one, um, but I think it actually is very important, yeah? Because when you look on the internet, there's lots and lots of cases in regards to uh, fat loss. I can go on for another half an hour with this. I'll spare you. Uh, guys, uh, please comment below, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.